Hello, I'm Kai Herman and I'm going to present case 26 of the Others case library. This 47 year old woman presented with inflammatory back pain. In detail, she reported on alternating buttock pain, also pain in the second half of the night and there was some improvement of her complaints with intake of NSAIDs. The pain is persistent since the delivery of her child with, uh, and her daughter is now 14 years old and she has another child as well which is 10 years old and uh, on clinical examination there was rather good clinical mobility of the spine. CRP was reported normal and also EGLE B27 was not evident. Okay, this patient came to the uh, outpatient department and uh, we performed X-ray and MRI. So you can see here this uh, pelvic X-ray in anterior posterior projection and um, the sacroiliac joints look rather normal. The contour on the left side can well be distinguished and also on the right side you see the dorsal aspect of the joint. Uh, there is some faint joint cleft also visible here in the ventral aspect, but here in this area, this uh, the joint space cannot be um, analyzed so well. Maybe there is some sclerosis, uh, it's not clear. So if you look at the spine, you see that there is no scoliosis uh, whatsoever. Um, Otherwise, um, on the first glance, uh, there's nothing much to see on the AP film. And this is a lateral uh, view. And if you, uh, if you look carefully, you will see that there's a lot of sclerosis in the region of the facet joints. So there might be some osteoarthritis of the facet joints. And also if you count the lumbar vertebrae, so this is the uh, 12th thoracic vertebral body. So this is one, two, three, four, five. And this could e either be a six lumbar vertebra or the segment S1 of the sacral bone with an additional disc between S1 and S2. Looking at the MRI images that the patient already uh, had with her when she presented to our department, we, um, we have uh, two T1 and two STIR sequences available. The T1 sequence uh, is seen here. The, Examination was performed on an older MRI machine, so there are some grainy images, and you can see that there is some fat metaplasia in the sacral bone on the left side, and uh, in the ventral aspect also maybe a little bit of fatty metaplasia, but very localized, and um, otherwise I would say there might be some sclerosis here. The joint looks irregular and that is also the reason why the patient was sent uh, to us because the colleagues were assuming there were some erosions over here and if you compare it with the stir sequence then you see the major part of the joint is looks normal but in the dorsal caudal aspect of the joint there is some localized bone marrow edema both in the sacral bone and on the iliac bone but you have to note that the changes are only visible in two slices. We also have transaxial images. Uh, that means we can look uh, at the joint in, in another plane. You see it looks ill-defined and there are fluffy dark areas here which may cause, be corresponding with sclerosis but there may be also some erosions. Um, so we would need some more high resolution sequence like the VIBE sequence or even a low dose CT which, which we performed at the end. In the axial stir sequence you can see again that there is a localized bone edema in the dorsal aspect of the joint close to the joint capsule. Looking at the uh, sagittal images of the spine we see there is some disc uh, degeneration going on in the initial uh, stage in the L4, L5 level and there is some uh, high signal here on this T2 which is also uh, high on uh, T1. 
So there is some fatty change going on. And also some sclerosis because there is some dark area here. If you want to uh, be sure about uh, the changes, you always should visit the coronal stir image, which you can see here. And you see the, uh, there is some, um, some localized, uh, localized bone edema, I think, a little bit. At least it was to be seen on the, uh, on the stir images. So here you see there's some localized bone edema in the S1, S2 disc. So there is some reaction. I don't know why it is not visible here, but uh, here we can see it very faintly. Okay, patient was then uh, referred to our CT uh, scanner. And here you see the axial images. Um, if you start from the top, we, we, we started about at the middle of the lumbar spine. We can see that there is some gas inside the facet joints, which, which is corresponding to osteoarthritis of the facet joint, at least here on the right side. On the left side, there is some uh, sclerosis, so that's also compatible with osteoarthritis. And then uh, two levels down, we see a lot of sclerosis in the facet joint, so there is a lot of mechanical load on these joints and there's osteoarthritis developing. We see ossifications of tendon attachments at the bone. And if we look now at the joint cleft of, the, of both sacroiliac joints, we uh, can see that uh, also a little bit of gas is inside the joint, but uh, that can also be the case in normal patients. But you see there are some osteophytes in the dorsal aspect of the, uh, of the joint. And uh, there's also sclerosis close to the joint, but there are no erosions. That's very important. There are no erosions in the right sacroiliac joint and also not in the left sacroiliac joint. There are some cystic changes in the posterior aspect of the left sacroiliac joint. And if you look uh, very carefully uh, on the right side again, you will see there is the cartilaginous part of the joint uh, up to this point where we then have the retroarticular space where we have the ligamentous part of the joint and further down here, we have an additional contact of the iliac bone and the sacral bone here, which we call an, an accessory joint facet. And this is regarded an um, uh, abnormal joint form variation of the sacral joint. And recent research has, uh, has uh, confirmed that these joint form variations are very uh, prone for the development of degenerative changes in the sacroiliac joint, being it osteitis condensans or, like in this case, osteoarthritis. Again, if we, uh, if we check the sagittal uh, reconstruction of the same scan, we can see that uh, this disc between the first and second sacral segment is rather uh, it has a good uh, disc height, but there are some irregularities of the lower end plate of the S1 level. And uh, also on the lateral side, we see some sclerosis over here with irregularities of the joint contour. So um, there is some erosive osteochondrosis over there and also in combination with osteoarthritis of the facet joints. So this is a patient with uh, osteoarthritis. I think um, we, we know to few about osteoarthritis of the sacral joint. In this case can help us uh, finding out which, which patterns of, of structural damage and active inflammation is compatible with osteoarthritis. If you want to study to want to study the case in depth, I recommend hitting the overlay button and then you get the explanations that I just uh, sh showed in the, uh, in the video. In, in more detail and you can study those uh, findings uh, on your own pace. So thank you very much uh, for watching and I hope you found this case interesting and uh, see you at the next case of the Asas Case Library. Thank you very much and bye bye.